Wir freuen uns sehr, dass Julien die Zeit hatte, uns endlich beim Fantasy Filmfest zu besuchen. Und hier ist er. Please welcome Julien Maury. Guten Tag. Ich bin Julien. Ähm, ich liebe dich. Und das ist pretty für mein German. Um, I'm very happy to be here, uh, and I mean it. Uh, it's um, my second time in Germany. My first was a long time ago. I was about seven years old. And um, I'm really excited to have a feedback from a European audience. So uh, I hope you will enjoy the movie, and I don't know if You guys have seen uh, our previous movies, Inside and Living. It's totally different. <laughs> okay, we have a Q&A afterwards here on, on stage and I yeah, hope you have some questions ready. Enjoy. If you want to insult me after, I'm here. Work with Alex uh, together. So, how did you two meet? I'm curious. Um, on a website. <laughs> uh, no, we, um, we, we met uh, because we, have, uh, we had a mutual friend, and um, Alex used to, uh, to be a journalist for the French Fangoria called The Bad Movies, and, um, and I was a big fan of him. His uh, articles, and I always agree with uh, with him. I thought he uh, was uh, when, when he hated movies. I was really uh, in the same mood, and we loved movies the same. And so um, I asked this mutual friend if he was uh, nice, and uh, because I knew he knew him, and um, and he said that you don't know him. Let's let's organize something. And we had a, a coffee one day, and uh, we. Uh, love it first. <laughs> wow, it's such a fruitful um, yeah, three films you got from this love first set. Very, very nice. Um, yeah, are there already any comments or questions from you? Yeah? yeah. Um, what's it like having two directors on the set? Do you both work with the actors or just one with the camera? And one? How do you split up your work on the set? Um, it's a uh, It's um, really simple because uh, we uh, we work a lot uh, before the shooting with Alex, and uh, we storyboard basically the whole movie. And um, so uh, when we are on the set, it's uh, it depends on the on on the day. Sometimes are uh, you know I, I'm much more with the actors. Sometimes Alex does and much more with the technique. Really, it's fifty uh, fifty and. Uh, Of course, uh, it depends on the, um, the you know, sometimes I, I am you know, much more close than, uh, than he is uh, from an actor, you know, and so I am going to talk to the actor much more than he is, and uh, it really depends, but we really trust, trust each other, and um, I know that he, if he, he goes and sees the director of photography, I don't have to go after to know what he has said, and uh, I really trust him, and he trusts me, so uh, we move faster this way. Can you tell me about uh, Blackwood? How did you find that place? How did you build it? Um, we, uh, we did the both. <laughs> Because we, uh, um, we shot the movie in uh, Bulgaria, in Sofia, and, um, and uh, in the beginning, in the, the first draft, and um, we, uh, the place um, was um, uh, a fun fair. And, uh, and so we, uh, we went to Sofia because someone told us that uh, there was a, an abandoned uh, fun fair, 
but uh, it wasn't abandoned at all. And, uh, it was uh, really in a really good shape, and we were much more looking for a place like um, uh, Pripyat, you know, the city near Chernobyl. It's uh, totally abandoned with the vegetation everywhere and uh, something, you know, much more like that. And um, and honestly, at the, that point, I. It was the scouting. I was depressed. I said, "Okay, we are never going to find this uh, this place." And um, and it's uh, back, uh, Blackwoods. It's the back lot of the the, the studio we have shot in. And um, it's a totally uh, it's, it's a, you know a, a pure surprise because we we went into the back, the back lot and we said. <gasps> You have amazing things there. You have a boat. You have an American street. You have the Western street. You have, a... and then uh, we we started to think about it and to maybe uh, you know we could change the the, the main set and uh, because um, we we thought it was much more original maybe to have this cinema studio instead of the fun fair, which is the place that we have already seen in, in so many movies. So. Uh, and uh, so we have the, this, this, uh, the, the base, and uh, we have built the, uh, some stuff around it. Like we, we brought some old cars, we, we built the Blackwood things, and, uh, and yeah, it's a, it's a mix between the two. It's, it's obvious that you are very inspired of the, uh, of the genre, that you are real genre fans and uh, uh, love directors like probably John, Car John Carpenter, Wes Craven. So when you are writing the script, how, how, how does it go? I mean, you say, I mean, there are so many references and homages uh, in it, so what, what, how do you uh, make the inspirations uh, go into your script or say, okay, want to tell the story and then a little thing of this and that to, to make it your, you know what I mean? Yeah. In Omar? No, I'm sorry, it's because it's really clear. <laughs> no, 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 it's clear. Um, it's, uh, of, of course, it, it, it can look like a, like a, a fan film, but, um, but it's not. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, I, I think we, um, it's, uh, we have never thought with Alex uh, that we were uh, really doing a, in paying an homage to, uh, you know, doing reference, explicit reference in our movies. Um, of course, there is some in, in, in it, but, um, but uh, it's the, the audience and the journalists who pointed it to us and they said, hey, it's like in this movie, in this movie. And most of the time, we forgot about it. And we said, because we have seen, of course, all these movies, but it's part of our, our DNA. And uh, when we write the script, when you, it's, um, it's obvious for us, but most of the time, we, we, we don't see the references. And so... Uh, comes out just yeah, sure exactly. It pops out. Um, okay. Um, starting with high tension or uh, irreversible, uh, people are talking about the French hard wave. Um, um, so where do you think this spirit comes from? I mean, you, you are part of it. Uh, um, um, so uh, what's happening in France? We, also, we always think, oh, yeah, the next French horror movie, we have to see it as probably the sickest one. Yet. Um, in France, nothing happens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, you know this this uh, this idea of a uh, 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 French horror waves. It's um, it's totally an idea uh, built from uh, uh, abroad. Um, because in France, honestly, no one gives a shit about horror movies, and uh, they really don't care about you know. And when I say they, I mean the the whole. Uh, chain of, of people working in the, in, in the movie industry, um, <coughs> starting with the producer till the, 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 the theater owners. No one wants to, uh, you know, is interested to horror movies. So, um, uh, same thing in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> same in a lot of places in the world. But, um, uh, so there is not a real wave, you know, it's a, a small one. And uh, all the titles you are giving me, as uh, is, uh, they are, uh, it's uh, 
when you see the releasing dates, it's maybe in the, the best years, one per year. And so um, it's always like a, a sniper shot. <laughs> it's always an isolated event. And so um, it's uh, more and more difficult in France to, uh, to, to convince investors and to raise money. And uh, uh, for Livid, we had uh, less budget than for Inside. And for Among the Living, we had less budget than Livid. So it's a, a big fall into nowhere. And uh, so uh, it's harder and harder because with Alex, we are young filmmakers and we have more and more ambition and less and less budget, so at one point it's not going to fit. You don't see it. You're, you're, you're good. Möchtest ihr noch was sagen? Ja, hier, nochmal. Yes, uh, yes and no, because we, um, we have seen uh, uh, almost 100 kids on the movie and um, the one we took um, were uh, the uh, real actors, you know, they, um, they, they have made much more movies that, than, than we have and, uh, and so um, even the, the, the small girl and the they are all really professional, and that's what we were looking for. Um, because, uh, you know, in the, the, the movie industry, there is, a, uh, there is something that, that, that you heard a lot, a lot of time, is that never take kids in the movie and never take animals. And, um, and so, uh, so we were afraid of, of that with Alex, <laughs> so we said we want professional kids. And, um, and uh, that was the first uh, criteria. And uh, this, the, the second one was, the, of course, the, the fact that they have to be um, uh, to, to work as a, as a group. And so uh, that was the, the, the easiest thing, because as soon as we have decided the, of, of the kids, we put them together in a room, and it, was, it, it worked at the, the, the first time. So. Um, so it was a uh, real luck for us, and um, and uh, of course, they, uh, as they are used to to shoot, it was um, it was really easy because they know how it works. They know that they are going to wait uh, sometimes hours before shooting only one one, one shot, and uh, they know that. And as they, they are kids, they don't get bored. They always doing something else, playing, and uh, and so um, it was. Uh, Strangely, uh, uh, <laughs> it was a, a good experience. Uh, yes, uh, first of all, I really enjoyed your movie. It was great, and I also liked Inside very much. And my question is, um, do you see a future for the, not only French, but also for the European genre movies? I mean, in the last years, it was kind of, it, it looked like a trend. And for us Germans, like, uh, because we don't have something like uh, German genre uh, cinema in the last years, we don't have as much horror movies as you have. We have uh, attention and inside and conscious and marches, and there was uh, a lot to see for the European audience, but there was really nothing coming from the German uh, do you see a future in the European homes, or do you think it's going more down? Let me think. <laughs> 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 <My> prediction. <laughs> um, I, I don't know, it's hard to say. Um, what, what I see is, uh, is, is what, you know, what I experience, it's, uh, it's just my point of view is made by my experience in France, um, and uh, of course you're right. There is uh, so so few films uh, popping up from from European countries, but I think the the one that uh, that uh, that emerge are uh, are good, and I think that makes the difference. And um, yeah, I don't know how it is going to um, to evolve, but um, 
but I know that in France, uh, Alex and I are maybe the last one <laughs> willing to, to do uh, that kind of movies. And uh, all the other ones are shooting in the States or, you know, in, and, and so uh, we are like doing resistance, and, uh, but it's harder and harder, as I said, and so I don't know how it is going to, um, to, to, to end, but um, we, are, we are fighting, we are struggling, <laughs> and, uh, and it's, a, it's, it's just a problem of, of winning, you know, the, um, if the, the producer, uh, you know, give the, the, for the first, you know, uh, the first impulsion. You know, it, it's easy. For example, you um, you have in the, the United States, you have hundreds of horror movies each year. You have dozens uh, each Halloween, and um, there is uh, among all that you have one or two very good movies. But to have one or two very good movies, you have to have hundreds of crappy crappy things, and that's normal. That's logical. So uh, it, 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 the idea would be this. Know, to have the same in Europe, you know, to, to have a lot of production just to see emerge some talents, and um, and that's always has been like that, you know, for the the, the, the western, for example, you had hundreds of, of, of westerns of the or the giallo in Italy, you know, the, you had hundreds of giallo, crappy giallo to have, uh, you know, one or two masterpieces, and uh, to have one Dario Argento, and so. Um, so it's always the same. You, we have we, we we have to have a you know big production to have to to have success. So and it's we are far away from that in France and in Europe in general. So um, so yeah, it's uh, every day every day struggle. Yeah, but it's also true that uh, if someone has a success hit like like you uh, then or you know there are many more examples then the U.S. Um, uh, the studio is coming, knocking, and saying, hey, come on, let's, we have this great script here, let's do it, you know. So they are taking away the talent very brutally, probably, too. Hmm? Brutally, brutally, with but, dollars. But he told me, who was calling him already, you know, it's very interesting. <laughs> this he, he has met the, the business, yeah? Hmm? Um, Changing over to the uh, censorship situation, because I don't know if you know that we in Germany here, we cut films even if they are for grown-ups, grown so people have to spend all their money in Austria, but that's another problem. So how is the situation uh, in, in, in France? Do you have any problems with the very brutal, gory scenes, or is it more accepted than probably here? No, you are alone. <laughs> <laughs> you are the last, the last country to cut. Um, <laughs> I know, I know the problem because uh, I discovered it in a very brutal way. Because uh, when um, when we received that, uh, with Alex the, um, the the inside DVDs, we we didn't knew it was cut. So we put the, <laughs> the disc in, into the DVD player and we said mm, <laughs> something strange here, <laughs> and, uh, and and it's not well made. <laughs> it's really rough. Um, so yeah, um, uh, in France it's uh, really not the same. You, uh, the the cinema is uh, really considered as a, as an art, you know, and uh, and and filmmakers are, uh, you know, you cannot touch the filmmakers. We have the final cuts. We have all the rights on our movies, and we can do basically what we want. And. Um, you know, we experienced it with Among the Living uh, because uh, some the produ some producers of the movie wanted us to uh, to cut, for example, the opening sequence, and uh, and they put on us a lot of pressure. But we said no, and we were convinced we were right. So we, we had the final words, the final words. Um, and uh, about the censorship, it doesn't exist in France. We only have a, a classification commission. Uh, who gives to just uh, you know the PG-13 and uh, and uh, and that's it. But uh, it it can be tricky because um, if you have, uh, for example, we have the uh, uh, forbidden uh, under 16 and 18, 
and um, if you get the under 16, you you lose the half of the the, the theaters in France because the the owners doesn't want to play a movie with a under 16 with a rate, an high rate rate. So um, so it can be another form of censorship, but it's you know it's much more uh, vicious. <laughs> And, and it's really happening, I think. Huh? It's really happening. Huh? The 18 label is not very the, long. The 18 label is uh, is not given anymore uh, because the, we um, we were closed with inside. <laughs> uh, with, uh, we uh, we ask for an audience to uh, to explain what we had in mind and to explain that we weren't uh, two psychopaths and uh, willing to kill babies and. Pregnant woman, and um, and uh, the last one was Martyr uh, with uh, the movie with Pascal Logier, and uh, he had uh, the, the ATM, and uh, and so he had to to ask to the Ministry of Culture to uh, to uh, to interfere into the decision, and it was a mess. But it was the last time, and uh, but the problem is that if you have the ATM, the project is dead. The movie is dead because it's considered as a, a porno movie, and uh, so no theater released it. And when you are broadcasted on TV, you only have the right to be broadcasted at the, the time you broadcast porn movie in France, so uh, after midnight. <laughs> so uh, basically, you, you you know that nobody is going to see your movie. And DVD releases, you know, because the problem which I described is mainly. Um, when DVDs come out, they have to be cut even if they are only sold for grown-ups here in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, no, no, in, in France, uh, the DVD, you don't have uh, the obligation to put the, 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 the age that you, you, you got for the, the theater exploitation. And, uh, and it's even the, even a kid can buy uh, inside a... Uh, in France, you, no, one, no one cares. But, uh, and it's the same for television after, when you broadcast the movie. Each TV channel chooses the, the age. So it can be higher and low or lower. One tip, just put on a German language track and you will make a lot of money. <laughs> Everybody will buy your films in France. <laughs> Not Austria anymore. And um, maybe talking about pregnant women, how, how did you get Beatrice Dine for uh, inside you know, and so forth? How, how, how did you meet her? Um, it's, um, uh, we didn't knew her uh, before inside. Um, we, when we started the casting, we, um, we knew we wanted, we want, we wanted someone, someone a well-known person, but we knew that we were young directors without any experience with a small horror movie, and um, and we thought about Beatrice, uh, but we uh, we were convinced she she she, she didn't where we, she were in, in interested in the project, but um, but uh, it wasn't the case. We sent the we said we have nothing to lose, and we sent the script um, to his agent, and uh, one week later we had. His uh, answer, and she said, uh, um, "I want to meet the directors before saying yes or no." So <laughs> under pressure, and <laughs> said, "Okay." And uh, we had a, a coffee in Paris, and um, and she was adorable. She was so nice and so far away from the image she she gives to to, uh, to everyone of being uh, someone like. Aggressive and rough, and, and um, she's a, she's really an angel. An angel. She's so nice, so funny. She's the the, the most fun woman I've ever met, and uh, and so it was really a, a cool meeting. And the day after, she said yes, and uh, and during the promotion of Inside, she made a mistake. She said, um, "I want to do to be part of all of their uh, movies to come." <laughs> and we said okay. <laughs> so, so we decided to take her and uh, in, in each movie, and she is also in the the segment that we directed for ABCs of Death Two. So uh, we have one more. Presented by Beatrice. Yes. <laughs>
<lacht> okay, wollt ihr noch vielleicht irgendwie was Nettes loswerden? So, oder habt ihr noch eine Frage? Ja? Um, I don't know yet, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, we, um, we have uh, written a new script during the post-production of Among the Living um, because with Alex we are writing every day, every day, and uh, we don't want to lose time because as we know it's very difficult. We are always trying to find new ideas. and. Uh, This script, we have sent it uh, to, uh, to a bunch of producers uh, in Paris and we, we had uh, the same feedback and uh, each, each and any one of them said uh, it's, um, it's too dark, too twisted, too nihilistic and uh, we cannot produce that. <laughs> so uh, so we, uh, we were uh, quite confused with Alex but um, But they were right. It's the, the darkest things we have ever wrote. So um, I think we um, we were talking about that uh, earlier. But I think with uh, Inside and Live It, uh, this one is the, the end of a, a sort of a trilogy. Um, very you know very immature trilogy, and uh, it's a sort of uh, these three movies are and. An homage to the, to the, the, the kind of movies that we love, and um, and now we are trying to explore different aspects of the genre, and um, and so uh, this one hasn't found a producer, but it's still in a drawer, and uh, we have uh, written another one that we have finished uh, two days ago, and I uh, I must work on it tonight, <laughs> and. Um, And this one is, uh, I hope, is going to find a producer. It's less, less hardcore, and uh, it's, I think, uh, much more, uh, you know, fitting. Yes, it's a mix of uh, politics and um, and horror. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> So we, yeah, so we don't know yet. Also the other dark thing too, yeah? yeah. <laughs> And you have the ABC of this two uh, segment. Yeah, it's, uh, it's coming up. It's coming up yeah. to October 2. I think we can all say great job. Thanks for coming. And we are, you are outside for a little a moment when you want to talk with you and you sign some. Of course. Some covers. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.